The Suffolk latch allows the smith to practice the forging techniques of isolation and manipulation, but it also provides the quandary of where to start. Hello, I'm Mark Asprey, and in this video we should be making a basic version of a Suffolk latch, comprising of the handle with a double cusp and a mortise, the thumb press, the latch bar, the staple, and the latch keeper or latch catch. In this clip, you can see me dress the upper cusp and the thumb press mortise, but how do I know how big to make the mortise to begin with? That's the quandary. For your first latch, you need to make a thumb press and work out its dimensions. The thumb press is comprised of the pad for the thumb and the latch bar lever. I'm choosing a stock that favours the thumb pad and drawing down the latch bar lever using the remainder of the stock. I want a thumb pad about an inch in length to support the thumb. I'm using material that is half inch by quarter of an inch and I'm laying off one inch for the thumb pad and drawing down what will be the latch bar lever. I'm using the hammer on the edge of the anvil to isolate the material for the thumb pad. I feel in this case that a guillotine type tool divides the material too much and robs me of material width for my eventual outcome. To sharpen the transition I use my hammer and the sharp edge of the anvil. Here is the result thus far as I head into spreading the thumb press over a soft edge of the anvil. Using the peen of the hammer I divide the material in two and then work on either side. I generally do my weak side first which is moving the material away from me and then catch up with my strong side moving it towards me. Dress the corners leaving you with a somewhat elliptical thumb pad. The other end of the thumb press is tapered and will eventually be curved around the bick. I keep the bar attached to the parent bar until I've finished all the forging. You can see I'm using the cross pin to draw down the material. I choose to use an anvil block to clean up the inside here but I could also go across the corners of the anvil face. Your choice. Chamfer the edges when you've finished and you're ready to cut this from the bar and curve the end. If you haven't got an anvil block then just go across the corners of the anvil face. The length of the latch bar lever and where you place the curve is going to be dictated by the thickness of the door that you're going through. I'm using a swage block to shape my thumb pad. If I didn't have the swage block I'd probably go for a piece of large pipe that I cut in half and then mount to a flat plate. You can see I'm also bending the edge of the thumb pad away from what will be the thumb just to give it a little relief. I'm using a seven and a half inch length of three quarter wide quarter inch thick material to make the actual handle. I'm laying off three quarters of an inch off one end so I've got almost a square section and I'm bringing it down using the hammer and the edge of the anvil to about three eighths, um, strong three eighths or half inch wide just at the neck there. Allow the next material to grow in thickness. This will be your mortise. I want my cuffs to be shaped like a spear point so I'm going to draw it to a sharp point over the bick and if I've got a three quarter inch square I should get something that's going to be about an inch and a half long for the spear point. If you want more than that then lay off more when you do your original offset. For the spear point leave the stock thick at the end. If you want more of a leaf then draw it to more of a sharp point. The mortise for the thumb press is within 3 eighths of an inch of the bottom of the cusp. So I'm going to isolate the material for the cusp now so that I can prevent damage to the mortise later. My slot punched is undersized at about 3 eighths of an inch wide. I'm going to dress the sides of the mortise later which will elongate the hole to half inch 9 16 which is my desired outcome. Punch small, stretch long. As I punch I'm going to displace material to the sides. I want to dress the mortise so the sides are level with the side of the handle. I have a tapered rectangular drift that I'm placing inside the mortise. I'm going to dress the sides, both of them, tap the drift in a little further and then redress the sides a little more, eventually taking the drift out. You're going to have to cycle through dressing the mortise a number of times so I'll leave the drift in a position where you can get back to it on your next heat. You may need to dress the top and bottom sides of the mortise if they start to bulge too much.
Once you've got the mortise where you like it, it's time to turn your attention to spreading the leaf or the spear. Re-establish the shoulder and then using the cross pin, split the material in two, work the material away from you first and then work it towards yourself. As you spread the leaf, try and keep your tongue hand as quiet as possible. If you move your tongue hand around a lot, you're going to get a lot of distortion within the mortise. You can see I've got a little bit here. No problem. Run your drift back through and straighten it all out again. Keep your peen parallel to the center of the stock unless you need to equal out the spread somewhat, as I'm doing with this bottom corner just now. I like to dress the cusp with the flat face of my hammer as it tends to equal out the sides just a little bit. If you have a problem with your mortise or the orientation of the cusp, just put your drift back in and make any corrections. About 3 8 of an inch below the mortise, I want you to create a shoulder on the opposite side of the bar to the shoulder for the cusp. This is the bottom of your handle. Create a short taper back to parent stock thickness and then dress the sides and the corners of the bar. I put a lot of effort into dressing the corners as this is the bit that's going to be held in the hand. The cusp at the other end of the handle is forged in exactly the same manner as the first cusp, just no mortise. Lay off about three quarters of an inch of the offside edge of the anvil and neck in to about three eighths or half an inch thick with the parent bar. We're not having a mortise so you can draw out the parent bar as it thickens back to parent stock thickness and then point the cusp. I'm going to create a sharp corner at the base of the second cusp so I'm going to isolate the material for the cusp and then I'm going to turn my attention to the bottom of the handle leaving myself a little apex of material that will be my sharp corner just as we did with the miner's candlestick if you remember. Extend your taper further up the handle. Leave yourself about three quarters of an inch of unforged material in the middle of the handle. Dress the corners. I'm looking for a handle that's going to be between five and a half and six inches long. Once you've got the handle where you like it, turn your attention to cusp number two. Again, divide the material with your peen, work away from you, and then work toward you. The top surface of this cusp is going to be seen, so make sure you dress it with the flat face of your hammer when you're finished. I like to spread the centre portion of the handle just a little, but that's personal preference, I believe. Once you've finished with the handle, make sure it's centred along the bar. Dress the corners of your handle with your hand hammer, and if you need to file anywhere, now is the time while the bar is still straight. I'm going to bend the lower cusp at the edge of the anvil, and then true it up at the vise. Hold the apex of the corner slightly off the edge of the anvil as you make your bend. I use a vice jaw insert with a radius edge as I crisp up this bottom corner. Once you've got the corner where you like it, lift up on the stock while gently tapping a bend in with your cross peen or a ball peen hammer I suppose. Try and keep the handle parallel to the cusp. Make any adjustments and then flatten it out with the flat face of your hammer. For the other cusp, clamp the mortise at least the thickness of the bottom of the handle up in the vise. Bend away to not quite horizontal and then true up the corner. Once you've got the corner where you like it, lift up on the stock and put your bend in with the cross pin. You might find you have to go to the bic to dress one end of the handle or the other to make them equal. Make sure everything's laying in the same plane by working on the flat face of the anvil. Use an anvil block or the edge of the anvil for truing up the cusps. You may need to run your drift through the mortise hole one more time, but that's the handle complete. I use the same 3 quarter by 1 quarter stock for the latch bar, and I start by drawing the end down to about half inch wide. Taper back to parent stock over 4 inches or so, and then lay off about half an inch of the offside edge of the anvil, and neck the bar in. Neck in to about 3 eighths of an inch in width and then take it to the bic and dress any growth in thickness. I leave the extra thickness in the uh, isolated material at the end of the bar. That will be drawn down later for the pivot point for the latch bar. Dress the latch bar on the flat face of the anvil. 
knocking in the corners as you go and then work on the isolated material knocking in those corners. We're about to make a disc with this material. Set the shoulder and then spread the disc with the flat face of your hammer or with a ball peen hammer if you wish. Get the pivot point as round as you can now to save file work later. For the staple I'm going to go back to the half inch by one quarter material. I'm going to lay off about 5 eighths of an inch and draw it down to about an eighth of an inch thick or so. I'm going to work to the offside there to the anvil and I'm going to leave some isolated material for a corner. Again draw that down to about eighth of an inch or so. Come back to the near side edge, lay off about an inch and isolate the second corner working on the near side and the offside edge of the anvil. At this stage I'm going to spread the material with my cross pin and then probably clean it up with my flat faced one inch fuller. But again you could work on the edge of the anvil if you had no fuller. You need about an inch and a half of stock between the two corners. Bend the corners over a slightly radiused edge of your anvil. You might need to quench out the second corner to prevent everything from bending as you work. You can bend the second corner over the heel of the anvil or if you've got a large V-block and a round fuller, handheld fuller, start it in the V-block with your cross pin and then use the fuller to come in and just crisp up the back of the corner. My staple is going to be fixed to a plate which is going to be screwed to the door so I don't need particularly long arms to the staple. Crisp up the second corner and get rid of any bends in the bar. If you need longer arms to your staple and you're going to use the V-block, simply bend the opposite corner out of the way as you work. Back to the 3 quarter by 1 quarter bar for the latch keep or latch catch and I laid off about an inch and a half there and drew it down to about a quarter of an inch square. At the end I knocked the corners off and I just flattened it to create a disc. This is going to get screwed to the frame of the door. Drew everything up and then knocked the corners off. Take another heat and move to the offside edge of the anvil. Lay off about three quarters of an inch. Draw the material down to about a quarter inch square. By keeping the stock quarter inch square, it makes the installation look a little more professional. Bend the rat tail through 90 degrees. Again, you may need to quench the remainder of the stock to stop everything from bending. The rat tail end of the latch keep serves two purposes. It stabilizes the latch keep in the door frame and stops people from shoulder checking the latch keep as they use the door. I bend the rat tail so the small disc comes to rest just behind the shoulder towards the parent bar. We're going to clean up that shoulder to make the latch receiver later. I cut away the excess material of the latch keep with a hacksaw and then check the rat tail for alignment. You can see I've got some work to do. If you like this style of forging, check out my books at markaspie.com. I have three books to help you along your blacksmith course of study. And if you're looking for a place to forge in North America, Go to the Abana.org website and have a look at their affiliate drop-down menu.